The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Uh, well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for being with me this evening. Uh, and uh, it's uh, here we are. Mickey D, loud and clear, John. May your cup runneth over. Oh, frotteth over. <laughs> Big word. Uh, what extraordinary trade. Oh, amazing, isn't it? I mean, wow. Uh, thank you, David. If you can see my screen, hear me. That's great. Alan, of course, is with us. He's a tutorial guy, um, as is Mickey D and uh, many others here today. Uh, what an extraordinary day's trading. I mean, the NASDAQ was down um, $8,000 <laughs> um, uh, in early morning trading, and, and then we've had these incredible reversals. Uh, absolutely extraordinary stuff. Anyway, uh, let's um, push on. We've uh, got a, a lot of our usual friends here. Alan, of course, Albert, he's a, a tutorial guy. Let me see. Here we are. Uh, yeah, oh, David, uh, David Beach from over in New Zealand. David, good to see you with us. Wonderful. He's a tutorial guy. Um, he's also running a leader follower program with uh, uh, our broker, Striker Securities. If you're interested in uh, what David's doing, you can uh, go to the Striker website um, and see his trades. And the leader follows a very, very good system that allows you to piggyback, if you like, on the uh, uh, on the uh, trades of uh, people that you want to follow, <coughs> and but uh, they never get their hands on any part of your account. Uh, it's all segregated. Very, very good system. Uh, so, uh, David, good to have you with us. Uh, and uh, Doug, of course. Uh, George, good to have you with us. Greg, uh, uh, the uh, wealth fund manager from Colorado Springs and uh, Texas. Uh, I think he's in the process of moving to Texas. Good to have you with us, mate. Uh, Greg Palladini from California is with us. Uh, of course, you've been following Greg's progress, and uh, he's been generous enough to share with us uh, some of his observations while he's doing his Daniel Kerr tutorial. Terrific. Uh, Jeff uh, Sherbrune's with us. He's been a long-time member. Jen is with us. Uh, John down in uh, Coffs Harbour. I hope you haven't got this rain we've had up here, John. Boy, it's just been... Brutal, hasn't it? You know, <laughs> before this year, if you'd asked me what the weather was like at the Queensland's beautiful Gold Coast, I'd have said drought with occasional thunderstorms, but uh, that's all changed. We've got uh, uh, La Nina, uh, and uh, it's just rain, rain, rain. You can't believe it. it just goes on and on. Uh, lawns are growing. They need cutting every five days or six days at most, and, and it's so wet that even the uh, right on mow is slipping everywhere. It's terrible. Uh, yeah, no, John saying, yeah, he's had a dose of it down at Coffs Harbour, which is uh, south of us between um, Gold Coast and uh, Sydney. Hell of a business. Yeah, ridiculous, really. Uh, anyway, um, the uh, farmers are happy. That's the main thing. So ill wind that goes no one any good, isn't it? Uh, Joe's with us, uh, Keith's with us, uh, Matt L. He's, of course, Mark L. My party couldn't start without him. Uh, Matt, um, Mickey D, uh, super trader. Murph, certainly can't start a webinar without Murph being with us. Uh, he's a wonderful supporter of the Daniel Coe tutorial guy as well. Miles, good to have you with us. Richard, welcome. Nice to have you with us. Rolf down in Melbourne, grand to have you with us. Uh, Todd and uh, Trevor as well. Uh, anyway, uh, let's move on. What do we say? The leftists, <laughs> the leftists will fix climate change. It's, all, it's silly, isn't it? Anyway, <clears throat> let's move on, folks. Uh, much uh, wonderful stuff to talk about. So uh, today um, is uh, titled Alchemy, Turning Speculative Thought into Gold. Um, and uh, alchemy, of course, over the centuries has been a very, very big deal. Uh, and uh, we'll come to that as soon as we get on to the next slide, which is, you know, um, markets are rational, orderly, and sometimes predictable. You're going to see a fair bit of that today. I think it's a, an extraordinary day's trading. So uh, uh, for traders, the idea of speculative thought, that's the driving force of, of, of successful trading. As, as a tribe, we're, we're all hardwired to think about getting more, more food, more potential mates, more land, more wealth, more of everything. 
uh, the drive to provide food, lodgings and security for our offspring uh, is a basic force of nature. Um, and uh, in the modern world, speculative thought uh, and the creation of assets, whether in gold bars or some other measure, is the driving force of markets. It's all about the money, uh, as you well know. So let's see what it is. So it was really interesting, uh, alchemy. It's a sort of uh, mainly referred to as starting in the 3rd and 4th century in, uh, in Europe, but actually started way before that. Um, Egypt and uh, uh, Arabia, um, and uh, uh, it, it's been around a long, long time. Um, and simplified, uh, the aims of the alchemist uh, were threefold. Find the stone of knowledge, the philosopher's stone, that's where uh, J.K. Rowling's got it from for the Harry Potter series. Uh, to discover the medium of eternal youth and health and to discover the transmutation of metals. This is the one we most often associate with the word alchemy. Um, uh, to, uh, uh, to the medieval alchemist mind, the different elements were but the same original substance in varying degrees of purity. Gold was the purest of them all, and silver followed closely. Um, there's a, quite a write-up on this on the, from the Royal Society of Chemistry, um, if you're interested. Uh, you'll uh, you can you can read a whole lot more about it there, uh, and um, uh, uh, Britannica uh, dictionary uh, encyclopedia Britannica I should say um, has got a whole lot on it as well if you're interested, and it, it's a really interesting subject. Uh, you know, for the purpose of doing this uh, uh, webinar, I, I've read all this stuff um, and. Uh, uh, it's a lot. It's a lot more involved, and a whole lot more in it uh, than uh, just our um, uh, our modern day idea of it. That simply turning uh, lead into gold. Uh, but there've been some wonderfully famous men and wonderful minds attracted to alchemy. Uh, one of whom, of course, uh, was Sir Isaac Newton, uh, the father of modern science, uh, who was a, just a wonderful thinker, um, and. Uh, 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 we have uh, quite a lot to do with uh, uh, the history of uh, Sir Isaac Newton. Uh, so uh, I do recommend you read up on it. It's, it's a wonderful idea. It's a lot a lot deeper than, than the original uh, thought or the simplifi simplified uh, thought, I should say. Anyway, let's talk about our alchemy, uh, futures and forex trading. So uh, there are three parts to futures and forex contracts. There's the Supplier or creator of the goods and products that make up the subject of the contract. We're talking about farmers for the grains, um, uh, growers for um, uh, the, the livestock, uh, miners uh, for uh, <coughs> metals, precious metals and others, um, uh, and uh, government, of course, for the currencies. Uh, and on the other side of the contract are the end users, mills uh, that need to buy the wheat to make flour, refineries that need to buy the oil uh, to turn it into uh, petroleum and uh, other byproducts, uh, jewellers who uh, use the gold uh, to make uh, jewellery, which is why you have a February contract uh, in gold, because um, March is the um, uh, marriage month in India. It's the most propitious month for marriage, so most of the folks get married in March. Um, and that's basically why you have a February contract, uh, so the jewellers can uh, get all their gold in uh, to make, because gold is the traditional uh, wedding gift um, in uh, India. Uh, so, but these groups on their own simply not big enough. They don't trade frequently enough to create a liquid market. You can uh, <coughs> imagine that. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, uh, in the petroleum market, you've got the um, uh, people who are uh, pump, pumping crude oil um, and you've got the refineries who need to buy it um, and they know roughly what their requirements are going to be in the future months or their production in future months. Um, and so with the futures contracts, they can sell um, a part of their um, production in, in future months um, and lock in a price certain. And for the refineries, uh, it means they can buy a portion of their uh, requirements to keep the refinery running 
um, and they've got a price certain for that. Uh, but they just don't trade often enough uh, to have a liquid market, and, th and that's where we come in. We're speculators. Uh, we're the people who are speculating on the future movement of uh, futures of Forex price. Um, and uh, we're the source that makes the markets run because without speculators, uh, you'd have no uh, effective uh, meeting of uh, a bid and ask except, uh, you know, at the end of whatever the negotiation were for those uh, small groups. Uh, whereas because of the great interest in speculators, that's us, uh, we're able to create uh, liquid markets in these wonderful, wonderful uh, product futures uh, and forex. So the Daniel Code is is built for speculators, and I'm talking now about price signals. Um, if you uh, have done a tutorial and you've learned how to trade time, that's an entirely different subject. But all of this is relevant. And our TO3 and our blue line trades are by definition counter trend trades. Um, and our TO3 plus signals are both counter trend trades and continuations of the trend. So all our suggested trade signals are based on the fact that a known Daniel Code target has been or is very near achievement. Once that's been reached, we then require the market to demonstrate to us that the market agrees with our analysis by reaching the point that we specify on the website as the point of election. Uh, and when this is done, we say that the trade has been elected. So it's not enough for the market to simply give us target recognition, which it does on a fairly regular basis. It then has to uh, change its position and go to a point at which we specify the trade is being elected. Uh, when this is done, we say the trade's elected, the trade's on foot. And on our analysis, we always assume uh, that the market is balanced. Uh, and uh, if the market's not in balance, what happens is a new force comes in that propels the market in its original direction. Uh, and that leads to either the trade not being elected uh, or a relatively fast reversal after the trade's been elected in the direction of the original trade. That's the dreaded outside bars, which some of you I know hate with a passion. Uh, once you've learned to trade them, of course, uh, they're actually very, very good trade opportunities because uh, outside bars, by and large, tend to be accelerations of the trend. Um, and um, you, you've all seen that. So, uh, But an outside bar is basically a one-bar reversal, but there are also two bars, three and four-bar reversals. And these form part of the flip me trade that we've discussed with you uh, recently. Uh, and these essentially are reversions to the major trend. Uh, so they're a source of great interest. And those of you who've been following them in the last few webinars, I've shown you what they are and, and at what stage they get elected. Uh, and they're a source of great interest. So uh, now to get them programmed, uh, one of you at least, um, it was um, uh, Lockie uh, up in Brisbane uh, asked me when we were going to get them programmed. Well, you know, we've been uh, hit pretty much by uh, COVID uh, and other illnesses for the last six or seven months, uh, and our programmers have been off sick or snowed off with other work. So we do hope to get that uh, new Flip Me program to you in the next few weeks. Uh, and I know Terry's had a terrible dose of um, uh, of uh, COVID, um, and he's uh, just recovering now. He had a couple of days uh, with a temperature of 103 point something. I mean, that's scary stuff. And I know a number of you as well have been ill. So just take great care, folks. It's uh, not a thing to uh, take lightly. Um, I know uh, uh, Clive Palmer, some Australians will know uh, Mr. Palmer or know of him. He's a character very, very wealthy character, um, and uh, who swears black and blue he's not going to get vaccinated. Well, of course, yesterday he was car carted off in an ambulance uh, to uh, Pindara Hospital with uh, a bad dose of uh, COVID. Yeah, yeah, just be careful of it all. Okay, so 
to consistently beat the market and build up your store of gold, you must have a system. A proven system that has a long-term record gives you an edge. And once you have an edge, the longer you trade, the more money you make and the more gold or equivalent that you get to store. And this is our alchemy as traders, the ability to make money on a regular basis from markets uh, which build up our store of gold. And the Daniel Code Doctrine states that markets turn at and only at the Daniel Code numbers, which we publish for you in members' charts. Remember now I'm talking about trading price. Uh, TO3 and TO3 plus signals are predominantly price, although they do have a small element of time in them, uh, but nothing like what I teach you if you do a Daniel Code tutorial uh, where you learn to trade entirely on time signals. So how can we test this proposition that markets turn at and only at the Daniel Code numbers which we publish? The best way is to find a day with surprise causing initial panic and therefore big ranges. This is where most systems fail. So uh, we've got a marvellous opportunity to uh, look at this uh, proposition today because, boy, uh, unless, you, unless you see the markets in their Daniel Code proportions, you would just be absolutely bewildered uh, by, by what markets are doing and why they've done what they've done. Uh, and once I show you these markets uh, with uh, the appropriate Daniel Code price levels on them, it's all going to make sense to you. And this is the big difference with the Daniel Code. This is makes the Daniel Code unique from all other systems. Uh, only the Daniel Code uses, of course, um, the ratios that I've uh, found over the years that have been revealed to me, if you like, um, and uh, they're dynamite. Um, and uh, today uh, has given us a wonderful test, uh, and we don't get many as uh, wild and scary as we got today. So it's a great opportunity to have a look at it. So however you trade, even if you don't take the Daniel Code TO3 and PLUS signals, Knowledge of the Daniel Code numbers will make your trading better. Whatever system you trade, you can take the Daniel Code numbers, put them on your chart. You'll see that all markets react to the Daniel Code criteria. So uh, today's trading certainly gives us that criteria of panic with the NASDAQ. We're down seven, uh, seven and a half, eight thousand something dollars in early morning trading um, and uh, then recovered. I mean, there's plenty of life in these equity markets still, folks. I mean, don't let anyone tell you otherwise uh, for them to have the reversals they did on uh, today's uh, market, the today's news. Uh, really was quite extraordinary, wasn't it? Uh, remember when we get these huge volatile days, there are certainly more coming. Uh, uh, these days are like cockroaches, they usually have company. Uh, so uh, just remember, uh, as I've told you before, when you get these super volatile days with big, big ranges, don't be frightened to put on a trailing stop, a dollar trailing stop using one ATR uh, over at least 29 days, uh, preferably longer period. So uh, all uh, charting programs have um, that tool, it's called um, uh, average true range and you can set the number of days you want it uh, to calculate over and don't get too short, you just get uh, too twitchy and react too much to the market and we don't want to do that uh, because the way that the Daniel Code makes money, essentially it doesn't have a terribly high winning rate. I can give you a, uh, any number of programs with very high win rates, but they don't make any money. They're too obvious or they're too restrictive or they don't trade often enough. The Daniel Code makes its money because the average win across a period of time in the Daniel Code, the average win is twice or greater than the average loss. Um, so uh, it's very important to us that our stake stays roughly the same over a period of time. Uh, so that's why we uh, use this uh, one or absolute most one and a half ATR average true range number. Um, and you should be up to date on that for whatever markets you're interested in. So drama in markets is contagious. Um, expect more in the coming weeks. I mean, 
uh, I've been waiting to see some drama come into the market and, they, and it really hasn't been much at all. I mean, there's been a few down days, but uh, nothing terribly exciting with it all. Uh, the more exciting uh, trades have been the long side uh, of grains um, and, and the struggle uh, of gold um, to uh, get itself into a solid uptrend. Uh, really interesting what gold did today, isn't it? Uh, it had its uh, huge uh, run up, which is what you'd expect uh, from news that uh, Ukraine was invaded by Russia um, and uh, then uh, pulled most of it back. Anyway, <coughs> let's uh, have a look at this idea of variance between the Daniel Code number and the bar's true high or low. <coughs> what would you call accurate? We allow no more than 0.1%. That's not 1%, that's 0.1%. And usually it's a whole lot less. So uh, proof of the pudding is in the eating, so let's eat it. And what we're going to do is we're going to test every market for which we publish members' charts, except for copper and sugar, which didn't have any dramatic moves to them. That means lots of uncorrelated markets. Is that a tough enough test? Test we're going to show you forex we're going to show you precious metals we're going to show you grains we're going to show you equities we're going to show you t-bonds all of it um, and think this through seriously because given the volatility we've had today and the drama uh, and the news fed drama and everything else that's gone on to see these markets hitting and turning at their daniel code numbers is quite extraordinary um, and these are uncorrelated markets for the for the most part. So is that test tough enough for you? Can't think of one that's tougher, and I can't think of anyone else who'd be prepared to do this. Let's have a look at this, folks. Now, uh, these charts were accurate from about um, 4 p.m. Eastern time onwards, uh, but they may not be showing exactly the closing uh, specifically where it moves around a bit in that later time frame. So <clears throat> this is the first of the markets that we publish charts for. Remember, the markets we don't publish charts for, uh, I still do charts and I we, we create the signals for them uh, as well. So uh, this is the Aussie dollar uh, against the US dollar pairs. Um, have a look at the uh, low of this. Uh, here it is, uh, the uh, low from our closing data now uh, is 70.95. Have a look at the red line, 70.97, two ticks variance with all this volatility. And then a big bounce up to close at 71.63. There's the uh, red line, 71.66, three ticks variance. Wouldn't expect it, would you? Let's move on. Because all of them have done the same thing. Now, target recognition, you remember, is valid at either a bar high low or the close. Both are valid. This is Euro JPY, uh, and uh, you can see its close 129.368, one tick variance. Here we are, I think. I'll give that 169. Sorry, the code 129, 307 against 367. 60 tick variant, nothing, hardly more than a hair. Okay, let's uh, continue. Uh, here's uh, the Euro USD. Have a look at the closing uh, bar there. Uh, the low, uh, the low. Uh, came in at uh, 111.065. Look at all the numbers there. 111. Uh, 111. Uh, 098 and the close. Close is even better. Uh, 111.927 against the blue line at 111.997. British pound is our next. Uh, one to look at, which is the uh, British pound uh, paired with the yen, uh, and uh, we have a low there uh, of um, 153.375 against the uh, black line, 
153478. Don't forget the black line is the last level of support and resistance for any swing. A close, a daily close below that black line moves the probabilities hugely in favour of the swing being taken out. Uh, and it doesn't look a lot, but we remember uh, some time uh, ago, uh, quite a while, uh, when uh, gold was having its breakout, uh, I told you that on a daily chart and the movement up was uh, uh, pretty worthwhile. So bear that in mind. The black line is different because it's the only one that works on close as well as bar high low. The other um, uh, support and resistance from the Daniel Code ratios work on uh, true highs, true lows. Uh, the black line in particular works not only on true highs and true lows, but also on the close. Okay, here we are now, British pound, US dollar. Plenty, plenty of volatility in there. This thing just dropped like a stone. <laughs> uh, put in its low at uh, 13273, uh, but uh, you can see it, uh, the blue line at 13269. Extraordinary stuff, isn't it? 69.73, five ticks different, four ticks different, four ticks variant, and it closed uh, at 133.81. Uh, where's the, um, got a blue line at 133.76, you've got the black line at 133.88. Split the difference, that's where it is. Uh, next one is up is uh, New, New Zealand dollar, US dollar. Uh, this is another one. It didn't show us much at the low, uh, but look at the close. The close is struggling, fighting uh, to get back to 67.02. It closed at 66.93. Uh, so there's a nine ticks variance. That's all extraordinary stuff. Interesting how, how strong that reversal was. Next one, uh, dollar CAD, uh, US dollar Canadian, the loony. Uh, as it's called, and here it is. Have a look at this for precision. The high of today's bar is 12878. There's the blue line at 12876. It's been on your chart for ages. The close, 12812 against the uh, blue line, 12811. One tick variance. And it just goes on and on. I haven't. Uh, done any cherry picking here as I told you the only uh, two charts the, for which we publish members charts that I'm not showing you uh, are sugar and uh, copper uh, and that's because neither of those two markets had a particularly dramatic day uh, and don't uh, add to the uh, proof of the pudding have a look at this next one uh, this is going to be the dollar yen and uh, here it is uh, there's the low, uh, 114409, where's our black line, 114400, nine ticks variant, like nothing, extraordinary, extraordinary stuff, let's move on to the future, futures, uh, this is uh, oil, uh, crude oil, and uh, you can see it's got truly excited, uh, these are just raw, these charts, folks. I haven't tidied them up at all. I've got to update all the charts today because so many of them went off the past the range that I was showing you on the members' charts. Uh, but you can test that proposition if you're a cynic. Uh, numbers on the left of the lines are part of a set of ratios. Numbers on the right are also part of a different uh, ratio. So uh, you can uh, calculate the variance between them. Uh, and continue it. So, so you can see that these numbers I'm showing you are actually straight off. Uh, Daniel Code members charts and the uh, uh, high today of oil, <coughs> 154. Uh, where's our blue line? 158. <coughs> you couldn't believe it, could you? How accurate this stuff is. And that's when systems usually fail. Uh, but at the Daniel Code, the more volatility we have, uh, the better uh, the accuracy is. It's a, an amazing thing. I've talked about it often, but I'm thrilled today uh, that I've actually got the chance to show you uh, irrefutably 
uh, how this stuff um, has worked and performs. Uh, next on our list is the US dollar index. You can see it's running into a bunch of blue lines. In fact, uh, it's often a criticism of the Daniel Code. People say, oh, there are so many blue lines, which ones are going to be? Well, the whole point of the Daniel Code is that it will show you, it will uh, stop and run onto a market, or it'll be so accurate that there's no doubt uh, which one it's turning at. So the high here um, in um, the dollar index uh, was uh, 97,735. Um, and there's your um, uh, uh, numbers at uh, 95, sorry, 97,675 against a high of 97,735. Amazing stuff, hey? Okay, I better stop saying that. Uh, but let's move on and you can uh, test all of this for yourself. Uh, this is the S&P E-mini uh, where we've been uh, short for a number of days. Um, and um, it uh, gave up the ghost uh, pretty early on. Uh, and its low came in at 41.0175. Uh, what's our number there? Uh, 40. 98.25 against a low of 41.0175. Three points, less than three points. Um, what do we allow? 0.1%. In a market that's running in the 4,000s, 400 points would be 10%. 40 points would be 1%. Four points is 0.1%. Wonderful stuff. Okay. That's the S&P and it's resilient. Uh, I mean, who was, uh, who was buying the dip today? Uh, pretty gutsy stuff. Uh, although I must say, all of this uh, downside correction uh, in the equities has been very controlled. Uh, there's been no drama. There's been no uh, real pattern. Well, none really. It's just been a very orderly uh, pullback. Uh, and uh, you can see there's still plenty of buyers around uh, who are happy to buy the dip today. Uh, this is a goal. This is the next market for us. Um, and it had a high today of 1976.50. 1976.50. Can you see the blue line? 1976.50. Zero variance. And then, look, big key reversal bar today. Uh, which is surprising. I would have thought gold would have uh, wanted to hold on to some of that momentum uh, given the um, international uh, news of uh, what's going on in Ukraine. Uh, here we are. Obviously, gold didn't think it was that serious. Um, this is the DAX, our next market. This is Germany's DAX. I don't know if many of you trade it, but we have a really hardcore view of European traders um, who absolutely love trading the DAX uh, against the Daniel Code. Uh, and you can see here the low today was 13.782 uh, against uh, a black line of 13.801. Uh, but have a look at the close. Uh, the close was uh, 14.302. Uh, there's the uh, number, 14.283. Not far away, is it? Very, very, I mean, it, it makes perfect sense when you see these markets on the Daniel Code ratios, but it makes no sense if you haven't got the Daniel Code numbers on your charts. Uh, this is the Russell, uh, very important. Um, we've been short the Russell for a number of days as well. Um, and here it is, it had a nice uh, drop down. The low came in at 1883.1. Where's our blue line? 1881.2. Very, very small variance. Okay. Next one is uh, soybeans, uh, where we've had a nice trade in uh, soybeans in the uh, uh, success. Uh, it's high uh, for today. 1759 correct 2. What are we looking at? 7059 correct 6 is the blue line. Two ticks variance. Amazing given this volatility. Look at the size of this bar. 
uh, and it's rattled its way up there and then turned around and said ta -da. Amazing. Okay, let's keep going. We don't get a chance to do this very often, folks, but now that we've actually had this massive, massive burst of volatility, <laughs> I want to take advantage of it to show you exactly what these uh, markets do. You can see with silver uh, that um, uh, it, um, it had perfect target recognition yesterday. It's high. Uh, was 2466 against the blue line of 2465. Today, it stormed up. It got to um, 2570. Uh, the nearest blue line there is 2575. Uh, the close uh, was actually 2471. Uh, there's our uh, blue line at 2474, three ticks variant. Uh, for silver, and we're near the end of this study, uh, and our next one is uh, US T bonds. Uh, and look at this um, rallied up, made its high 154.26. There's the blue line 154.25, one tick variance, and that's been on your chart for a long time. You've been able to see that for quite a number of days. Um, and um, that's what markets do. And the Daniel Code controls all markets in all time frames. And today we've had a wonderful opportunity. I hope this has excited you, not bored you. Uh, but today we've had a wonderful opportunity uh, to be able to show you this stuff uh, in a real time uh, basis. Okie doke. So uh, the final one um, I've got to show you is the NASDAQ, uh, which is one that uh, we don't publish the chart for. Uh, we could, uh, but have a look at this. It was down nine, nearly $9,000 early this morning, um, and uh, the low uh, came in at uh, 13 oh, 25 something, I think, from memory, um, about um, five or six points away, whereas... 0.1% on this market is 13 whole points because this market has just got so, so massive. Um, uh, almost perfect junction, turn around, reverse, up it goes. There you are. That's what's happened with the market. Um, and it's really interesting um, that how much, to me it's really interesting, uh, how much um, excitement, enthusiasm there still is for the equities market. Uh, they've been down and they've been moving down, but they've been moving down in a very, very controlled manner. Um, and today was the first time we've had any real panic into the market in the early morning trading. Uh, and it's managed to recover all of that, uh, which is quite extraordinary. Uh, so, there's, yes, there's still a lot of strength, uh, I think, uh, to go, a lot of uh, uh, arguments to be had and uh, um, a lot of... Uh, uh, buying strength still in the equities markets, uh, and of course um, uh, the um, yeah, the uh, uh, U.S. Uh, T bonds. Uh, that's uh, just fascinating uh, that it uh, tried to rally today um, and got slapped down hard. So uh, we're starting to get an idea that the plunge protection, plunge protection team is still working, um, and uh, uh, quite uh, amazing work they put in today. All right, so um, we're having a shorter session uh, today, folks. Um, I wanted to take this opportunity to show you all of these individual charts because we don't get a chance to do it uh, very often because we don't get days like today very often. Uh, and what we've had is just this massive volatility, big, big initial moves, almost all of which have been reversed and reversed exactly at Daniel Code numbers. Um, and that's... Uh, that's been terrific, and I hope it shows you the necessity of having these numbers on your charts. Uh, if you if you look at the charts the, the way I've shown them to you with the Daniel Code numbers on them, it all makes perfect sense. Uh, if you're looking at charts without the Daniel Code numbers on it, um, it makes to me uh, it makes very little sense. If, perhaps it's better to say no sense at all. I, I honestly don't know how people trade. Uh, if they don't have access to the Daniel Code numbers. Uh, 
uh, but uh, as I told you, uh, we have a very, very small uh, membership. We're a very, very small business, um, and the whole world manages to trade without the Daniel Code numbers uh, by and large, and I think that's a shame uh, because they could do so much better if they knew the Daniel Code numbers. Um, if you're interested in learning how to create all this stuff yourself, folks, uh, you think about doing a Daniel Code uh, tutorial. Uh, covers Forex and futures. Um, and uh, uh, I guess the biggest thing is that we don't uh, talk about in detail here because it's reserved for tutorial clients. It's trading time, Daniel Code time signals. Um, and they're quite extraordinary, uh, as you know. And uh, uh, if you don't know, go to Forum um, and have a look at Greg Palladini's comments uh, as he's gone through his Daniel Code uh, tutorial. And he's been generous enough uh, and kind enough to share those comments uh, with our members, which is uh, absolutely wonderful of you, Greg. Much appreciated. I'm talking to you next week, incidentally, um, on, on the first. Uh, shoot me a line if that's uh, suitable to you, and I'll get the invitation done. Um, so uh, what's uh, our friend Akshay saying? Uh, from the silver chart, is the bar previous to the latest one the... What is he saying? Is the bar previous to the latest one the setup bar for a sell trade? Uh, <laughs> now let's have a look. We certainly had oh, nice and gas soybeans. Da, da, da. We had a we had a blue line sell on gold, which by correlation means we had a sell on silver. Actually. So the answer essentially is yes, but it might be a bar previous to the one you're actually talking about. Okay. Um, so uh, there we are, folks. That's it. If you'd like to know how to do all this stuff, uh, let me know, and uh, I'll be happy to uh, discuss a Daniel Code uh, tutorial with you. Uh, so uh, the business of trading is the business of making money. That's what it's about. Um, if you uh, are in the... Uh, position of saying you'd like to earn more than you are now, uh, have a change your life. A lot of the most common comment I get uh, from people who do the tutorial is to say it's changed my life and it can change your life as well. If you haven't already, folks, please go to the Daniel Code website, www.thedanielcode.com. Start your free trial. Just hit the register button. Any issues, contact Terry at support at the Daniel .com. As I say, Terry's been pretty sick lately, the, uh, earlier this week and last week. Very sick, in fact. So if he's, uh, you're waiting on a reply from Terry, please bear with him. Uh, give him a bit of time. He's been a very, very sick man. Okay. Uh, and uh, I think that's about it for us, folks. Uh, do please uh, pay attention to the disclaimer. It's very, very easy to lose your money if you don't know how to trade. It's also very easy to make money if you do know how to trade. Uh, and the difference between one and the other um, is uh, like the end of the world. Uh, so do I implore you, uh, make sure that you understand uh, trading and that you are a competent trader before you risk any real money. Um, that's uh, folks get excited. Uh, think they know something about trading, tear into it, uh, lose their money. Common, common story. Uh, about 90% of new traders lose their money. The stats say in the first three months, if you ask me, it's in the first month. Uh, that's where they lose it. Um, okay, uh, Rolf, thank you. Glad you enjoyed that. Opportunity and threat, yeah. Uh, interesting to see how this uh, all plays out, isn't it? Uh, it's pretty extraordinary stuff. Uh, okay, so a bit shorter than normal today, folks, but thank you for being with me. Uh, do enjoy your weekend. It's a wet, uh, rainy Friday morning down here, but uh, I've placed my orders, so I'm off the clock, um, and I hope you enjoy your weekend. Uh, if you want me to talk about something specific, uh, please just send me an email. I'll be happy to work up something and include it uh, in the next uh, webinar. Uh, John, yes, you too, mate. Stay dry. Goodness me, what a, bit, what a business. Oh, and David from uh, Wellington. Yes, a perfect day here in Wellington. Be mowing my lawns. <laughs>
uh, that's rubbing it in, mate. And of course, uh, with the right on you, of course, we can't even get over there. Uh, your lovely uh, la lady Jacinta, um, young socialist of the year as she was, uh, has got you lot still locked down. We can't. Uh, and I'm well and truly overdue for a trip to uh, New Zealand. Mrs. Needham wants to, uh, has family over there and wants to visit them. And uh, uh, I've got clients over there I'd like to catch up with. Uh, so, uh, David, if you can, uh, do urge uh, Jacinta to uh, open the doors a bit and, and, and let our Aussie mates come over. Uh, what a business it all is. Uh, anyway, that's it for now, folks. Um, enjoy the weekend. Uh, any questions, please shoot me an email, jneedham at the danielcode.com, uh, and I will be more than happy to uh, talk to you about your trading uh, in any aspect at whatsoever. That's it for now. All the best to you. Bye-bye.